Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 42 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I hope you guys brought your towels, because this is going to be a crazy episode. We are going to start working on environmental tech. Dun, 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 dun. And to get started on environmental tech, I did something very useful. I went ahead and taught this thing how to make lithrite. Lithrite is going to be one of the prerequisites of getting environmental tech up and running. So let's take a look. Um, environmental tech is a mod that adds a bunch of multi-block systems that can do some pretty cool stuff. And I honestly have not played with the new version before at all. So I have no idea what I'm getting into in terms of um, resources and costs and all that stuff. Uh, you're still mining, I presume, uh, therefore that we should have more diamonds than we did last time we looked. Yeah, we have a few more, cool. And you're probably processing a bunch of ore. Good job. Carry on, sir. You're doing a wonderful thing. And how's my power situation over there? Not what I would call amazing. Not what I would call terrible. We're going to want to boost the, um, the, the, the left-hand power guy pretty soon. Um, speaking of uh, power, how about nickel? We've got about 35 nickel ore that we can pulverize here in our resonant pulverizer that has some fancy of this stuff going on. Neat. So I'll let that cook, uh, hopefully get a little bit more platinum, and we'll go from there. But I wanted to get into environmental tech, and the reason I wanted to check this out is because it has void ore miners that look pretty neat to check out, and it also has some pretty cool solar arrays that can generate a decent amount of power from the sun. So, I mean, like, another power source, this one free, I'll take it. Uh, so to get started, uh, you need to know how to make a void ore miner controller. Now, I want to check. The tier 2 version just requires the tier 1, and the tier 3 version requires the tier 2. So in the past, it was like two tier 1s to get a tier 2, and then two tier 2s to get a tier 3, so it was worth teaching the controllers uh, to the crafting system, but this time I don't think it is. But there are a few things I might want to teach here. So for example, diodes, I suspect that you're used for more backspace. Diodes are eh, not used for all that much, so maybe I don't need to bother teaching you. So I just want a diode, and then we're going to want litharite. Litharite seems to have a lot of options here. So, so basically we're going to want 36 of those, right? Litharite crystals. So it's going to be a, about nine diamonds, I think, right? Um, so, yeah, because we need four of them. And then interconnects. Uh, interconnects are used for... I mean a handful of things. Enough that I might want to teach it to you. You need, you need structure frames for inner... Okay, so that's cool. So we definitely want to teach you how to make interconnects. So let's do that real fast. Um, interconnects look to be an important part of this mod, so let's get her going. Boom. And you need uh, black concrete. What's that even? I don't even know what that is. How do you make concrete? What is black concrete? Come on. What? What's black concrete? Interconnect, dude. I don't even know what black concrete is. Um... And it looks like that's exactly what you need. It doesn't look like, hey, or addiction. No, like just black concrete. So apparently I can make that. Um, just add water and you can make your very own concrete. Okay, neat. So I guess I can teach the fluid transposer how to make it, uh, provided that it's a fluid transporter that has water in it. So I'm curious. Um, let's teach you how black concrete is made. So you're going to need some ink. So let's do, are you full? You are, nice, okay. So let's get those guys going. Uh, what do I have over here? I have a, mag a fluid transposer that doesn't have anything in it and I have my igneous extruder. So let's make another fluid transposer specifically for filling things up with water. For now it'll be black concrete only, but maybe there'll be another need for it in the future. So real quick, we'll get a fluid transposer up and running because I suspect we're going to need a lot of these eventually. So I need um, two Invar gears, reception and frame. Two Invar Gears. Do you not know how to make Invar Gears? Okay, hold on. Invar Gear. That's Iridium, not Invar. Started with I. Don't blame me. Come on. So two Invar Gears. A reception coil and a machine frame. Fluid transposer, please. Thank you. So then we'll want an export bus. We'll want a bucket of water. Let's just do that. Export bus is probably on its way. Exporter, let's go. Come on. There you are. Uh, and some cables. And some 
of those cables. So let's put this down here. And we'll also, you know what need is a crafter. And I'm gonna pop this dude right at the end here. So in theory, oh, you know what something needs is an item. Impulse duct, right? Uh, so let's get power. Fluid transposer. We're going to want our item conduits here. And you're going to be configured. So where am I going to want to export bus from? Probably do it. Uh, I don't like much of my options here. Because we're going to want to import items from the top. Let's also import from the right. And we'll export to the bottom. That should be fine. All right, so we'll put our... Crafter, which might be done getting made now, on top here. There we go. We will export you. We're going to change you to fluids. We'll put water in there. And then we can get some cabling coming up. Boom and boom. That should be good. Is there a cable behind, by chance, that I could tap into? That would just be a little bit nicer for me. It's so compact back there. But there's not really a terribly large amount of space. I mean, if I ran it like this, this would at least make things... Well, no, because that's really not great anyway. We'll leave it as is. Are you on sandstone? Good. So you should be filling up with water, cool. And now we can teach this recipe of concrete. So we're gonna say black concrete powder becomes black concrete when placed in this machine, right? So in theory, I should now be able to request, let's say 10 of these, right? And what it's gonna do is just drop them in there and that should be good. So I guess that means that I should have everything for the most part that I need. So we'll need, um, let's just go with like 36 of these now. So that's going to process everything it needs to process. Um, and then if I ask for two interconnects, so you should be able to craft that. Cool. Nice. Uh, these guys are being made. Four of those. And then we should have a void or minor controller ready to go. We just need um, a kind of lens. Now I'm pretty sure we're gonna need to know how to make more of these. So let's just teach it the clear laser lens, which is um, just looks like any kind of glass. So that's a cool recipe. I like that. Um, so it's cool that environmental tech, it used to have, and I have to change that mode, uh, its own type of glass. It looks like that's no longer the case. So it just uses vanilla glass now. So that's cool at least. Um, so we'll grab ourselves a lens. So the different lenses are gonna be important later, but for now it's cool to do this. And then the last thing we'll just need is a diamond block for the void or minor controller mark one. Cool. We've got it. Nice. The other thing we're gonna want is an assembler, uh, which is just gonna need one more litharite crystal. Do, 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 do. We'll create ourselves an assembler. Neat. So what's all this stuff? Tooltip.environmentaltech.multiblockassembler.info.l123. Uh, so long story short, there used to be a book in environmental tech, and currently there isn't. Um, if you right-click the assembler on something, or shift right-click, or left-click. There we go. Hey, there we are. Left-click. We'll tell you what you need. Um, so this guy needs 24 structure bark mark ones or higher. Um, so what that means is there is different structure blocks. So there is a structure block frame tier one, which is that. And then a structure block frame tier two, which takes the tier one and upgrades it with a rhodium crystal, which as a reminder from last episode, you can only get from void ore mining, right? So in order to get to tier two, we have to make a tier one, we have to void ore mine, we have to collect resources, and then we can make a tier two, which will allow us to upgrade the void ore miner to get tier three materials that we can then use to make tier three stuff and yada, 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 all the way up to tier five or six, um, which, you know, as you can see is relatively expensive. So alethium crystals, for example, only come from void or minor tier fives. 
I kind of like that. It sounds cool. It doesn't look like there's a preferred method of getting them too. We'll talk about preferred in a little bit here. So as a reminder, basically the uh, structure block needs to match the tier of the controller. So tier one structure blocks with tier one controllers or higher, but why would you ever use higher? Um, the other thing we're gonna need is structure panels. So we're gonna need a bunch of those. That's this. So it's a good thing we already taught it connectors. You might need to learn a few more tricks today, Mr. Programmer. So let's teach it a couple things, right? So we're gonna need a tier one structure frame, right? You're gonna need to know how to make those. You're gonna need to know how to make structure panels. Um, and then the other things we needed were laser cores and laser lenses. So let's do laser. Uh, we're gonna need a laser lens, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But laser core, you're probably gonna to wanna to learn how to make those as well. So getting these things taught to the refined storage auto crafters is gonna be a big part of this. So now, if we look at environmental tech, right? So we need 24 of these, right? Um, you might need to learn a few tricks for the other guys. So hold on a sec. So that's cool structure panels. You probably need to know how to make iron bars. And I think I told you how to make gold nuggets. I did not. Should probably just teach it for now. At some point I wanna get compacting drawers, but we'll get there in the future. So we needed 24 of those, which are just done, boom. We needed uh, 20 structure panels. Done and done, beautiful. And then we needed two laser cores, easy peasy. Uh, and then we need a lens. So here's the deal with lenses, right? There's different colors of lenses. Um, and the different lens colors do different things. Uh, so for example, light blue lenses um, prefer to pull up certain materials. So if you go with a clear lens, it'll pull up, um, that's the Batani one, ore miner. It'll pull up pretty much all the ores with a standard percentage, right? So um, you have like a 10% chance of getting coal and you've got a 7% chance of getting iron. However, if you really wanna focus on getting iron, you could use a white lens and that will give you a higher percentage chance of getting coal or, or getting iron and that would be a slightly lower percent chance of getting everything else, right? So black lens for coal. Remember one of the main reasons I was doing this was for platinum. So if we look up platinum, um, platinum ore uh, can be bound with a light blue lens it increases your chance from 1.6% to 5.5% to pull up that thing. So that's cool. Um, so let's take that lens and make it light blue. So we're gonna want some light blue dye, check. And I'm pretty sure I just do this, light blue laser lens. Cool, so we can swap out the laser lenses as we want to try and get you know more accurate with our environmental tech laser doohickey. Um, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is come down here and figure out where in this area we wanna stick this guy. So I kinda of like to usually stick him in the floor. So in fact, let's do this. And what I'm gonna do is grab a, I don't know how much space I need for this. So let's do our drill augments for three and five. I'm gonna stick these guys in here. We'll do that, and we'll do one, two, three, four. I did that wrong. Uh, I don't think I have any actual stone, but that's okay. And did I get enough glowstone to fix that properly? Nope. Of course I didn't. Derp. There we go. Um, and I'm going to assume that this is built the same way it was in the past. So basically to build this thing, uh, we need our void or minor controller placed down in the world. Uh, and let's... Start it here. And if I left click this guy, right click this guy. Oh, hello, it places one of the blocks it needs. Nice, so right click him and it starts placing the blocks. And you can hold right click and ideally, it'll take all the blocks out of your inventory. You can see structures and structure panels being used up here. Um, so did you place everything you need to place? Are you done? Did I guess correctly on the sizing? 
Wow, look at me and my perfect guessing. Now, higher tiers need more space. So the fact that this worked now is great, but it's um, going to need more space in the future. I also don't love the fact of where it is, so I'm actually going to break it, undo all my hard work, because I want you to be up a little bit in the room. I think that would be cool. So I'm gonna re-pick up all my stuff here. And let's rebuild this by holding right click on this dude. So I kind of have to assume that this is working now. I, I hope that's right. Do I like the layout of that? I think that looks cool. That's fine for now. So you've got your lenses. So the only thing this needs now is the ability to see bedrock, which means it's dig straight down time. Remember kids, don't dig straight down in Minecraft. You could die. Oh, I'm getting lucky. I hit bedrock. Neat. When the laser forms, you know you've done a good job. Sweet. So now we have a laser going. The next thing this dude needs is power. Um, so that's cool. And uh, what I'm gonna do is grab my builder's wand. And just expand this dude out. So that looks pretty cool, right? So that'll be like our, our structure. So let's grab real quick, uh, refined storage dude, a crate to store the items that we get so we can keep track of that. And the other thing we're gonna need is power. Now this guy's probably gonna use a lot of power. I have no idea how much um, because there's no in-game book that tells me this is the amount of power this thing needs. Um, so what I might wanna do is real quick, teach you how to do flux ducts. Does that sound like a plan-ish? So what I'd like to do is, so you've got hardened and leadstone down, but I want you next to learn how to make redstone energy flux ducts, uh, which requires you, boom, uh, to make that. So you should know, in fact, let me put you back in there with proper hardened glass. So make me some actual hardened glass so I can do this. So you're gonna, Produce my hardened glass, hopefully sooner than later, so that I can reprogram this recipe. There it is. Boom. And we'll put this in the auto crafter. And then we're gonna need uh, redstone. So let me make one of those. And basically what I'm gonna say is um, this plus two redstone, right? Because if we look at this guy, we'll see that it's this plus 200 millibuckets equals the redstone energy flux, duct, flux duct, right? So what we'll do is we'll say processing mode of you, but since you don't know how the liquids work, I have to manually tell it that part, okay? So if I put this away, and in fact, I'm gonna actually need that in a second. This recipe goes in here, and uh, we're gonna want the flux duct that's empty to be whitelisted in the transposer. Uh, not, yeah, redstone, energy, flux, duct, empty. Cool, and you've already got redstone. So if I put this away um, and I say that I want like 32 of these, that should be fine. It'll use a stack of redstone and it should start processing. So it already put these things in, nice. You're gonna cook up your redstone. These things are already augmented, so that's cool. Um, and this will get us a, a healthy amount of this stuff, good. So I'll come back in a minute when those are done, and then what I'm gonna do is start replacing my leadstone cabling. Um, because our um, resonant energy cell is capable of outputting at 25,000 RF a tick, but these guys can only transfer at 1,000 RF a tick, so it's a little bit slow. Uh, and I guess the other thing I could do in the meantime is run that direction does that sound cool uh and maybe what i'll do hey exchanger just so it looks neat not terrible right uh and then you can go into there and probably by that time my redstone i'm already up to 21 of them so i don't think i can just directly right click and replace because that would be super cool if i could i don't think i can though i think i actually have to like remove these dudes real quick so let's and the good news is that they will um, 
connect to lower tier. So I should be able to do this. So like this guy currently has no RF in him, but if I do that, he's got RF again. So that's cool. So I can replace these components piecemeal, and that's a good thing. Because it means I can have like a main power line that's like really strong. And then the rest can remain on whatever power level it was at. Now, clearly, I'm a little bit low on these, or, or on power, because, let's see, I have 11 more, so that should be good. I am a little bit low on power, obviously, because um, these power conduits are not saturated so well. Although they're getting saturated, probably because all the machines finished running. And these guys are, wow, they're holding a lot of power, neat. So if I pop this dude here, do you start using power right away or do you need a redstone signal? So he's filling up with RF, which is good. Internal buffer of about a million. And oh look, he already pulled up. The very first thing he did was get me platinum ore. You're doing exactly what I want. Good job, void ore miner, tier one. That is beautiful. Now I'm going to imagine that you're probably, oh, you're not too slow and you got redstone for me. Nice, that's another really useful thing. Um, so I should now be able to take this platinum ore and say, hey, um, what's like the best way to process you? Probably cinnabar or whatever, um, rich slag. But check this out. I think if I, if I pulverize redstone ore, I think I get a pretty good chance of getting cinnabar. So let's go put that in my redstone dude that already has some of that. So that's cool. Melt that for me, would you, buddy? You're just going to do the last of these. So if I pulverize you, I might get Cinnabar from this. Boom, I did. And then uh, I can induction smelt you with Cinnabar. And now we're talking. Ooh, I even got some Iridium. No idea what I can... I wonder if that's ore dictionary with... We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so I can put all this stuff away. You could probably finish smelting that dude for me. Nice. So now if I wanted to get like four, or let's do, would you be able to make that for me? Four more of those bad boys? Nice. So we'll let that thing start cooking. I'm curious to see what my power is doing right now. You're actually not struggling. So we are not struggling for power right now. We're burning through that as much as we can, but we're really not doing much with this. Uh, we're producing a bit of power, but not much. So that's telling me the tier one void ore miner is not doing a, a terribly large amount of power. So that's cool. So this guy's doing great. He's slow, but higher tiers is a good thing and it will speed it up and we'll be able to do, I don't know if there's upgrades. Does environmental tech have the upgrades yet in it? So there's something called a speed modifier. Um, I, I'm not sure at which tier we're allowed to install modifiers, but I didn't see anything about a modifier yet in tier one. So maybe tier two will have modifiers for us. But for now, this is probably the best we're gonna be able to get um, until we pick up. Uh, so we're going to need, in order to get a tier two void or minor controller, we're gonna need six erodium blocks. So that's that. These things don't have recipes, so that's cool. But long story short, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a lot of erodium crystal. And thus far we've gotten zero. We've gotten more draconic than we've gotten erodium. So this might actually take a really long time. Um, I'm gonna just, just really curious. Just really curious. Remember I found one of these in a, I'm just, I'm just curious a little bit. Is this so wrong? Is this wrong? Does it feel wrong? I mean, it's burning through RF faster, so that's kind of a good sign. I mean, that did something. I'm putting it out there that that did do something. Um, it did burn through my RF pretty quickly, but that did something. So just as an FYI, that's a thing you can do if you're impatient like me. Yeah. That definitely sped that thing up a little bit. So that's kind of a cool thing to know. It's gonna burn through your off faster, remember, but it seems like it's not the end of the world to do that. 
And by the end of the world, I mean like crashing the game. But still no Erodium. I would love to have a little bit of that. Um, so what if I put you on... I forget what switch to fast mode. Switch to faster mode. So that's not too bad. So faster mode, it doesn't empty it of RF. And then fastest mode, it does. So that's good to know. Fastest off obviously makes it run faster. And I'm sure we've configured it such that you can't use acceleration ones. See, usage in a machine has been disabled in config. So there's no putting in a mechanical user. It is specifically disabled. Hey, our first piece of erodium. Nice. All right, so that's cool. Now remember, technically, because we have um, a non-clear lens on here, um, we are increasing the chance to get platinum and nickel and pretty much anything that um, a blue lens can do. So Certus, uh, Platinum, Mana Infused Ore, and Appetite are all increased chances, which is why we're seeing a decent amount of that stuff coming in here. Um, that reduces your chance of getting a rhodium as a result, right? So that's like a side effect. So keep that in mind, that if, if you want to get, you know, Platinum, you're going to lose out on a rhodium. So if you want, what you can do is just make a regular lens. Boom. And then we can pop down into here, wherever. Uh, so there's the light blue lens. If we replaced that with a clear lens, um, and then let's accelerate this. I just want a screenshot just so I can compare in a sec. So it's running, so that's a good sign. That's telling me that it's probably working. Sweet. And that will give you a slightly better chance at getting erodium crystals. Because now you're... So when you focus on blue, you're lessening the chance of non-blue, right? So if you want to get the most erodium at a time, this is the way to do it. So this is going to be a while. Because we need 54 erodium before we can proceed to the next step. And so far we've gotten two. And that's with me standing here holding right-click on this bad boy. So we may need to, ooh, Dimensional Shard Ore. I like you. I like that you give me that. Ooh, nice. That's cool. I like. And then we're also, oh, I forgot. That's only to get you a tier two. When we get to the next tier, we're going to also need a Rhodium for the actual structure blocks. So structure tier twos need two Rhodium per. And I don't know how many of those we're going to need. I suspect it's going to be a lot. So I think our erodium number, we're going to need a lot of that stuff to really, like we're going to need like a stack and a half, let's say, if not more. We might need two stacks of erodium um, before we even have enough to be able to proceed to tier two of this mod. And that's just for the void or miner. If we want even more stuff, then we're talking even more erodium. And then once we get erodium, we're going to want to get the next tier of, oh my goodness, this is going to take a while. I like it, but... We're going to have to figure it out. So we might want to have multiple Void or Miner controllers going. Because they don't use a lot of power. That's the that, that's what I will give it. Is they really don't use much power. I wish I could measure the amount of power they're using. But I don't think... I don't know what the direction's about. Um, if you shift right click, it removes the block. So that's a thing. Um, I wish I knew exactly how much power it was using. But it doesn't seem like a whole lot. Right? So... So that's cool. Obviously, speeding it up is, you know, kicking the power use into overdrive, but um, it's definitely not using more than we're producing right now, so that's a good sign. Also, are you done? Nice. Four Enderium. Nice, nice, nice. So right now, uh, this guy is capable of producing 1,500 RF a tick. We're going to speed that up right now. Does hardened fluid duct need to be here? I guess so. Cool. And we can push this back even further if we want. And now you're capable of reducing 3,500 RF a tick. So we just boosted it by 2,000 RF a tick. Now, obviously, it's burning our fuel a lot faster than it was, but that's okay because we have set up our whole fancy whatchamacallit thingy, didn't we? Didn't we? There's a reason. Dyer spent an episode or two increasing our farm's productivity and so that we could have more biofuel production, as a, which allows for more power production, which allows for more void ore mining. It's almost like I have a plan. 
Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that it is yield wrapping up point. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. I'm going to let this run for a little bit uh, off camera, just like I'm just going to idle my world for a while. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll see what kind of ores it came up with. So we're definitely getting erodium and lithorite, which is kind of a good thing. Uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, erodium. That's the most important one, really, for me. But we're getting pretty much any type of ore, which is cool. Um, so yeah, for now, take it easy.